So la uh, where we last left it, we had done this build, and that's just so that it uh, updates all, all of my code to the latest, so that it goes a little faster. The, the first time I did it, it might have been you know a, a minute and a half processing. Now I went down to 42, and now it'll have even faster next time. My handout ends with saying either uh, type taco emulate Android if you've got an AVD, Taco run Android, if you've got a real device, or Taco run browser to run it in Chrome. Just for practice, because this is also useful, let's type Taco run browser. You might have the device real or virtual, but we've also got the browser platform. That's when we did Taco platform add space browser. We added Android and we added browser. So let's try Taco Run Browser. You should recall this from the end of the day, yesterday, last time, where we can load it in Google Chrome as a quick and dirty way to check our project. Where's the website name again? The color one. B A D A five five. Five five, not ISS. Dot I O. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes. So, um, loads it up. Uh, you might get like a weird thing there, something about allow storage on device. We didn't see this previously because we didn't have the plug-in. This is asking, would you like your app to save stuff to the SD memory card, basically? Uh, so I'm, I'll say yes. You might have also have seen like a blank square open for a moment. That was the splash screen. So it's trying to show a splash screen. It didn't quite show it, so it showed a little blank. And then for a moment, this did say something about devices getting ready, whatever it said. And then it said device ready. So this is not exactly like a real device, but this will often help us to test our projects very quickly. And remember, what's very useful about this is the developer tools. Press F12 to bring up those dev tools right there. And then remember, there's a way for us to make it kind of look like a, like a device. On the top row of dev tools over here, switch to console. I'll talk about that in a moment. And then click on that uh, second icon from the left toggle device. So it kind of reshapes it like a device. A generic device, which we can put whatever we want here. And we're often going to play with the Samsung Galaxy S4. So now it kind of changes the viewport to that device, those dimensions, that profile. There's our app. Notice you also get a little finger there. You don't get the mouse anymore, but that's a that's like the target of, of a finger when you when you tap stuff. Our app doesn't do anything at all except that device is ready. But even that in and of itself is a big accomplishment because there's a lot of moving parts that could go wrong. And the point then is I'm looking at the console, and we get feedback here. I get con uh, uh, uncut module status bar, so some error, but don't worry about it. Then it says, okay, you've got the ability for battery, camera, device, etc. Mine says, fail to load resource, server not found. Fave icon. For some reason, it's trying to load the fave icon. This is not... This is not a website with a fave icon, so I don't know why that loads up. I don't have to really care about it. Then comes server response that did not find screen. It kind of also gets confused about the splash screen. <coughs> don't worry about it. And then persistent file system quota granted. I click allow, so I'm saying yes, let me save stuff to the SD card. So it says let us do that. If you if you denied it, it would have given you some other feedback. So once we get our projects more complex, instead of waiting for it to deploy to the emulator, waiting for it to deploy to the device, this might be a faster way to test things. It won't be the most perfect way because it doesn't do vibration, uh, camera behaves weird, other stuff is weird, but this will quickly let us test our app NC console output. So the project works. I didn't get any weird errors. If you got errors, we'll do lab time in a moment. but. Um, at this point, um, go back to the command prompt. Remember, it gets stuck here. Hopefully, they improve it in Cordova 6 or 7 or whatever, that it doesn't get stuck here. You have to remember to cancel this. 
control C on the keyboard. Control C. It says, would you like to terminate the job? Yes. And it takes me back to accept more commands. So control C to cancel. And you have to say, yes, you want to cancel. Now, if you've got um, a real device or a virtual device, go ahead and run it. I'm going to do taco run Android. I want to run it in a real device. It shouldn't be a big surprise, but what I'm going to do while that's going on in the background, I'm going to take a look at instruction number five briefly. We'll look at it more deeper next time. But this is we've been looking at instruction four, Cordova Workflow One. And I also gave you instruction five, which is Cordova Workflow Two. Let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to skip this first section here and look at screenshots. We are able to take screenshots of our device. Whatever our device is doing, we can take screenshots of it for later on the purpose of branding. When you actually have a real app on the App Store, you have screenshots of what your app looks like to entice people to download it. Oh, your app looks like that. It can do this. I want it. Buy now. So if we want to create screenshots, we have an ability to create screenshots with the software built in. Uh, we'll do that right now. Um, actually, if you back up a little bit, I should write it double here. But we actually need this first part here, number one and number two. Open the C drive, program files, x86, Android, Android SDK, tools. So. C drive, program files x86, Android, Android SDK, and then tools. Inside of tools, we will have something called monitor.bat. Inside of your tools, you have a tool to monitor your project. Uh, double click that. When you do this the first time at home, you often get a pop up that first appears that says, Would you, there it is. It'll, it should say, Would you like Google to track you? No, would you like, would you like to send Google diagnostic information, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't see it, it probably popped up behind one of your other windows. It should appear somewhere. It often happens. This is annoying. It pops up behind your windows, and you're waiting and waiting, and it crashes, and what happened? You never accepted this license thing here. So minimize your windows, and you should have probably, thanks for using Android SDK. Would you like to send stats to Google, yes or no? It doesn't matter. Say no. Proceed. Which executable did you find out? What's that? Which executable monitor did you have monitor .bat. Which, which directory? Monitor.bat. Which directory? Please. It's in the directory of the uh, Android project. And then what? And then Android SDK and then, and then tools. tools. Mm -hmm. And yes. then what? Monitor.bat. Is this a bat file on the true condition of the old DOS bat files? Probably, yeah. It's probably opening up other things. We can run Notepad on that. Yeah, there we go. Classic echo off, all of that classic stuff. Yeah. So it's setting your Java path and running Java, actually. So anyway, monitor bat. Make sure that pops up and say, OK, accept it, yes or no, proceed. And then we get this scary window that has all of these other sub-windows and monitoring our project and everything. And what I see on mine on the left, you've got a devices section. There's my virtual device hanging around, a bunch of apps running in the background. There's my real device, there's my Motorola. It's got two apps currently running my test one that I made earlier in the day and the one I'm working on right now. And notice it's delineated by the ID name. And we'll look at the screen in more detail later, but what I want to wrap up with today is that on the handout here, 
to do screenshots, you can do this on real or virtual devices. When you're ready to publish to the app stores, we need screenshots. And so running monitor bat, either on an emulated or real device, in the devices tab, click on the name of your device. Along the strip of icons, you'll see a little camera. Click on that little camera icon. You see right here? Click on your device, either real or virtual, and then you've got a camera, screen capture. Click on that, and right now my device is showing my, my, my basic Cordova project. You can see my real device, there's my notifications, I'm very popular. And so if I want to take a screenshot of this, click Save. And that'll create a nice high-quality PNG file of whatever you're looking at right now. We don't really need to do it right now. We'll do it for real a little later. But this will create a perfect screenshot of whatever you're looking at on the screen. This is not live. If I go back to my home screen, I'm doing stuff on my device. It's not updating. If I want to get my real current view, I have to refresh it. Not with this, not with this, but there are ways to do the sc screen recordings. Yes. Question here, Jocelyn. I think I got it. Question. A little help. Okay. So the only. Instruction says click on the camera Thank 
All right, so um, we're going to use this monitor bat for uh, making screenshots later and then also using it for uh, checking warnings and errors and such. And um, we've got a whole debugging suite with this thing, which we'll look at it later in detail. Uh, but just something interesting here, if you've got a real device uh, and you have it plugged in, stuff is going on here even though you don't do anything. This is your phone doing stuff when it's laying on the desk there, not doing anything, it's doing something. It's perhaps checking on your cell tower reception and sending everything you're saying to the dark. I mean, I don't know what you're <laughs> just backing itself up to the cloud and charging itself and all that stuff that a phone usually does. But I'm not touching my phone, and it's doing all this stuff. Um, now, this is obviously just zooming by me. How can I actually read it? We'll talk about this later because we're going to create filters. Filters to check our output. We can use this like a like the Google uh, console. Remember we've got that console when we deal with JavaScript to check our errors? This will do that also, and we want to set up filters and such. And it is on that handout on the first part that I'm skipping for the moment. When we come back, we'll look at that handout on part one, and we'll deal with this, because this will be very helpful for us to debug as well. Question? Uh, can you show us how to do the, what do you call it, any where you can uh, actually use your device? Sure. Let me reveal the big secret. <laughs> here's, uh, here's how do you control your device in Chrome. So this will only work if you've got a device, obviously, and it's only going to work if you've got Android 4.4 and higher. I've got my device plugged in, and um, here I've got, it, uh, I've, got, I've got Chrome running on the top right corner. There's these three dots. <laughs> Click on that. Then we've got more tools, inspect devices. So if you've got a device, I think this even works with a virtual device, which is like why. But it works with a virtual device. So the three dots, more tools, inspect devices. Google Chrome sees I've got my Motorola device running these two apps. This is the last one I ran right now, inspect. And that pops up another window. There's my app. It doesn't do anything right now, but there's my app. If it actually had buttons and stuff to click on, I would be controlling it. When I exit the, the app and go back to like my home screen and stuff, that doesn't control that. It's only these Cordova apps. 
So once we actually have a real app to work with, this will make more sense. So for some of you this will work, for some of you not. Uh, and I'll address it again next time when we actually make an app that does something, because this, I'm going to get tired of it saying, device ready. D -d -d <laughs> Great, but nothing else is happening. Next time when we come back, I've got a handout where we will take our project from last month and put it into here. And it's almost as easy as simply dragging all of our code from last month into our project folder, our WW folder. Because remember, we've got we've got a um, a folder called www www it's almost as easy as taking everything that we did last month and just dropping it in here I do have more instructions but we'll wrap it up for the moment and um, we've got a lot to think about now I'll turn the printer back on Hopefully your device is working. If not, we'll do some lab time to get it to work. And that's it for the moment, and we're getting closer and closer.